Right guys, today we are going to be talking about some classic or maybe instant classic bushcrafting blades. These are newer blades in the grand scheme of things that hold on to a lot of traditional bushcrafting roots and are really solid bushcrafting blades. So without any further ado guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and Instagram. The support is heavily appreciated. Okay, let's talk about them. Okay, so the first one up on the list for Instant Classics and kind of what got me thinking about this was the Martini Knives or Martini Bushcraft uh, kind of entrance. And uh, there, this one is the Martini Tundra GR. And this guy is kind of hard to show on camera because of that darn mirror finish. And you guys can literally see the camera in the, in the knife. Um, but it is a really nice, very traditional kind of lore styled blade. And what I mean by lore is the wood lore, bush lore, camp lore kind of knife where it has this very subtle uh, curvature on the spine to go down to a drop point with a nice kind of gradually sweeping um, with a gradually sweeping belly with a nice usually nice straight flat portion on your main edge so that allows you to do a wide variety of tasks but especially having good control for doing things like feather sticking carving and notching while also giving you some good ability to process game animals and other natural resources similar to that um, is actually made knife we'll talk about in a little bit and that is the uh, battle lore by uh, this is the battle lore by battle horse knives you guys can see there hopefully the resemblance obviously they are both a little bit different but they are both takes on the lore styled blade and i personally think that the lore style blade not only a pretty good classic styling but is also a very capable very well-rounded uh and very suitable bushcrafting style. In addition to that too, you also have very basic, very plain, almost simple handles that are, or handle slabs that are on this, of course, full tang blade. So I do have a review on this one, either that's already dropped or coming soon, but this blade is pretty darn fantastic at, at being a very simple, very kind of no frills bushcrafting knife. And this is the first real type of bushcrafting knife by Martini. So really excited to see and hopefully see future iterations of a similar of similar knives from them. Okay, so that's the first one. Now let's talk about the Legome. So the Legome is pretty similar. Once again, a lot of these are going to be Scandi knives or Scandi ground blades that are all heavily designed with bushcrafting in mind. Now the Legome takes off a little bit of its own type of route being more shaped after a puko as opposed to that kind of lore style. So generally with your pukos, you have a pretty much flat back with no taper. If not, there might actually be a slight upsweep. Of course, with this puko, it is just a flat back. And in addition to that, you have a constantly um, curved blade. So there's no real defined or essentially there is kind of a belly towards the mid portion, but the whole of the blade is curving. So you don't have a flat portion similar to your lore style blades. So this is definitely a lot better for your sweeping cuts when you're processing natural resources like animals, um, bark, and different uh, natural types of mushrooms or foods as a whole. So this one's gonna be lend, it's gonna lend its hand a little bit more towards that. But of course you can still easily do things like carving, notching, feather sticking with great ease. And I mean, you guys have probably seen this guy around the channel a lot. So like I said, a little bit more of a Puko design, but it is still a very classic. And that's kind of the focus of these knives is to pick very classically styled blades that are uh, very well made and definitely worth checking out. Okay, next one up on the list is going to be the Fieldcraft by Tops. The Tops Fieldcraft is definitely a classic for me. And even though it doesn't necessarily pull a specific inspiration from, you know, a Puko or a lore styled knife, um, it does have its own kind of way or its own shape. But this blade is kind of the culmination of many modern bushcrafting style and shape, or I guess I should say traditional styles kind of combined into one. Because this is made by the Brothers of Bushcraft or the, formerly the Brothers of Bushcraft, um, they really took their experiences from using many different styles of blades 
sides and blended it all into one amalgamation. Now, of course, with this one, you do have a very pronounced, very large um, straight portion on your blade to do a lot of things like feather sticking and wood processing with greater ease. Uh, but you still also have a pretty nice and pretty wide swept belly for doing different processing tasks uh, for different natural resource processing tasks. Overall, the overall the Fieldcraft is not my favorite of favorite blades, but it is such a venerable, useful tool that it is hard to go wrong with, even all these years later. And I think that's why it has remained popular for such a long time, not to mention the very, very comfortable, very large handle of the bushcraft or fieldcraft, I should say, is uh, really what lends its hand to some serious love. Okay, as earlier mentioned, this is the Battle Horse Knives or BHK Battle Lore. And once again, the Battle Lore is inspired by lore style knives. This is just on the larger end of the spectrum. This is nearly a 10 inch overall length blade with a little over four and a half inch blade or cutting edge. So this guy is once again very hard to go wrong with because of that classic lore style. This one's pushing a little bit more almost into spear point territory but still technically a drop point and uh, the handle and ergonomics are what I really love the most about it. Unlike the Tundra that has a very basic almost very bland you know simple handle shape uh, this one is very contoured, very well-rounded, absolutely no hot spots whatsoever. And uh, the biggest thing that I really love about this blade overall is the fact that because you have such a small handle and such like well-made ergonomics, it makes the blade overall feel very small, very nimble, and very agile. So you can end up in hand when you're actually using this blade, it ends up feeling like you have a lot um, smaller or a lot or a lot more nimble blade than what you might initially think. Because when you initially see this blade, you know, you see it as a bigger blade and you may not think of the fact that it's actually quite capable. So this is mine. Mine originally was a glossy or polished micarta. I ended up knocking off that polish for extra traction. So it's still pretty polished. It's not uh, something that I went through with like a very abrasive sandpaper and tried to rough up, but I did want it to be a little bit more grippy. So I did knock down that polish and uh, just made it a little bit more of a matte finish. Similar to what my Bark River Knives Bravo one is like in feel. Okay, last one up on the list, and no big surprise here, is the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. Now, the Bushcrafter, kind of similar to the uh, Topps Fieldcraft, it really doesn't have any inspiration like the Lore or Pucos, but it is its own kind of amalgamation and really good. And similar to the Fieldcraft, this is a drop point and it has a nice long straight portion of blade. And I think that, especially on the smaller knife, or especially on this smaller knife, I really do appreciate that because it allows you to do things like wood processing, such as batoning and um, batoning and feather sticking very well because you have such a generous surface to work with or generous you know, range of area that to work with that's going to be consistent in cutting. So when you are doing a feather stick, you can kind of trail it along like this and it's going to be a very consistent, very nice, very even curl every single time. So I really do actually enjoy that. The Legome or the Puko styled blades do struggle in that area a little bit, uh, but certainly I do really love this blade shape. Of course, that drop point with a nice thick tip allows you to do some rather industrial tasks, especially for the overall smaller size of this guy coming in at under nine inches. So overall, uh, I think the Bushcrafter is very hard to go wrong with, especially for the fact that they make these out of CPM 3V, which is a very hard wearing steel, it truly wears like iron, and uh, it is really a fantastic knife. I don't, I don't have enough good things to say about it, but rest assured, this is definitely one of my absolute go-tos, and actually a lot of the knives mentioned here are on my short list as far as Bushcraft blades go, because they are all superb performers. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.